Hello and welcome to the latest Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce Q&A. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Rob Pollard, director at Lightbox, one of Birmingham's leading digital uh, agencies. Rob, great to see you. Great to see you too, Paul. Uh, really appreciate you having us on. Yeah, well, um, it's great yeah, to, to have you here. And I mean, what we, we really wanted to talk about today was, you know, what makes a business successful in the digital space, uh, and particularly when they're selling B2B. And obviously, you know, sort of talking about the impact that, that, that COVID's had on how businesses go about doing this and maybe acted as a as a catalyst. So really tapping into your hmm. your expertise that, that that's known to, to many out there. But uh, and I'm sure we're looking for some some good tips and advice. But but just to start off, Rob, I mean, how have things been at Lightbox over the past six months? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> obviously, lots of change um, in terms of uh, ambitions and things, because, you know, it, for everybody whether it, you got busier or got quieter you know it, it's readjusting to um you know that that big event but um no it's, it's been great here it's um you know really busy uh obviously because of what we do that that digital space and the way that businesses are having to evolve <clears throat> excuse me uh you know obviously they need they need more support and more advice around how they shift from a very traditional model to probably perhaps more of a digital led approach. So um, yeah, you know, we're, we're seeing lots of, lots of um, new opportunities come up, come along and, you know, the agency is super busy. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's all good. Um, that's, that's, what, what's even more encouraging is that the positivity that's now around in, in yeah. the community, I think, and that has, you know, obviously when it first happened, those first three months, um you know everybody's on a kind of a bit of i'm not really sure what's happening but we've found in the last kind of two to three months that actually the attitude has felt like it's shifted and people are a lot more optimistic and motivated to want to uh work through this whether it be through digital or, or whatever that is um than, than perhaps they were in those first three months so Really, you know, lots of energy, which which is really positive, I think. Yeah, no, we need that. And obviously, you know, we've had so much energy in the region, haven't we? Momentum in recent years that, that you know, all of us who live and work uh, around here, it's quite intoxicating. And look, you know, COVID hits and it affects the whole world. And so, of course, there's a, a sort of a, a, a pause. And now we've, but we have seen that recovery started. And I think, you know, you're, you're, you're right about that, that energy returning. And I suppose you know, from a marketing point of view and, you know, people, you know, as, as you adapt and adjust, but it is around also importantly looking forward, isn't it? And how do you, 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 you adapt your business, adapt your models um, and reach new markets, reach new audiences? I mean, what, yeah. what, are you seeing a lot of common questions coming into you? I mean, Lightbox are well known in, in, yeah. in Birmingham as being you know, one of the, sort of the, the leaders in what you do, but are you, is it similar sort of queries and questions can you help me with this or are you seeing a whole range of different yeah uh, I, I think the, big, the, the biggest thing is obviously the the barrier to entry of accessing people mm. um you know where is it the, the, you may have had a few sales people out on the road you know um having lots of meetings etc that's obviously more of a challenge now so i think the the, the most questions are, or you know or in, inquiries that come into the agency are, are around how how we now access our audience um, without being able to, you know, be out there and seeing them and networking and all of that because all of that stops, you know. And yeah. I, I know that there's lots of great things going on in like uh, Zoom meetings, of, you know, networking. But I think that, you know, that 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 is a bit still a bit of a challenge in terms of building those face-to-face -face relationships that people had. So maybe they're not quite getting the same return on, on what they were getting. So they're looking at other channels, essentially. And, and I think that, um, I think there's been a real, all it's done is accelerate where we were going anyway, um, let, let's be honest. But I, I think that um, with, if you look at how e-commerce has grown over the last you know, decade, particularly yeah. in the last five years, uh, I think that B2B could really learn a lot from looking at how e-commerce acquire customers. And yeah. because, because what they do very well is build an experience from the initial kind of touch points and how they nurture that lead, you know, th through uh, social campaigns, retargeting, all of that, to keep you engaged in the brand, in the product. And then at some point, you, you kind of then switch on and make that purchase. 
but it's then also how they take you through that process of purchase and the aftercare as well, how they stay connected to their customers. And I think that B2B really, we were, you know, we were going down that route anyway, but I think it's just fast track that. And I think those businesses that recognize that early and were either changing the way they did things or activating those channels quickly are the ones that are going to come out stronger in the end yeah. uh, when you know when we're through all of this because if if in a b2b sense you really look at the digital customer journey and and think about how people will interact with your brand at every single touch point and the services that you offer and properly design it out and make sure that what you have what you have in terms of like your digital assets your web products whether it's e-commerce whether it's not whether it's running webinars or whatever that looks like if, if it's properly designed out and set out and thought about then you can really make an impact and, and really kind of move yourself as, as almost like a, mar a market leader in in that space um you know we're, we're doing work with all sorts of businesses across different sectors in the b2b landscape that are shifting and, and are thinking about you know, like me and you are having a conversation yeah. on, on, on Zoom now. Well, what happens after this conversation? Yeah. You know, what what are we sending? What? But then where are we directing them? And how can we then further engage them and, and keep them keep them interested in what we're doing until the point that they are interested in actually engaging with us? And, and Rob, I mean, why do you think there's maybe been such a, a disparity in the, the, the B2C experience, which, you know, we're all consumers aren't we as well so we're all living that and and experiencing it and kind of um you know have, have you know increasingly all been sort of spending more um online and getting greater comfort and as you said all about that experience over recent years versus sort of b2b it's almost like you know, people put different hats on i have yeah traditionally have different expectations maybe lower expectations from that that business to business point of view but so yeah. when you say it it almost seems Strange, doesn't it? Why? Why would it be so different? I think that actually, I think actually, the expectations in business, in business to business, is probably higher mm. because there's a trust element there. Um, I think when you're buying, you know, e-commerce has really kind of solved that convenience mm. um, challenge. You know, where, whereas going to the shops and you know, dragging all the kids out, all of that. You know, we're, we've all been there. It's a, it's a bit yeah. of a pain. Whereas if you can sit at home and, and, and kind of get on with life, but still be ordering your products and they're coming to you, that's, that's, that's making life easy for you. It's really kind of solving that convenience issue. Yeah. I think with B2B, it's less about convenience, I think, um, or, or potentially was. Uh, you know, obviously, um, convenience is, a, is a, an important thing. You don't want to put up challenges for people to engage with you, but um i think that there's a big trust element there because you, it's more of a person to person sell particularly mm. in a service services uh, environment yeah. and and almost that i want to sit down and look you in the eye and kind of yeah that notion is 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 a lot more prevalent but the actually, handshake sort of thing let's take hands yeah. on it and yeah and i'm not saying that that you know that there is still a place for that but maybe you can do a lot of the work that needs to go before that happens digitally. Um, I think there's still a, you know, a significant amount of value as to sitting down with somebody. I mean, even us as a team, it was great to work remotely, but actually since we've got back in the office a couple of months ago, you know, it's so much more kind of, there's more energy, there's more um, collaboration, there's more. So, you know, that, that touch point is still very, very powerful. But I think that if you just take, there was too much of that potentially, you know, there'd be a meeting and a meeting, then a, another meeting and you've, you've finally closed and then probably a meeting after before anything's even got started. Whereas I think that now in terms of the, the, the client acquisition um, stuff and that, that visibility, a lot of it can be done um, digitally. And, and if you do it right, it can be even more powerful, you know, very, very content driven. And, but I think first and foremost, before you do that, um, and we're working a lot with businesses on this is, is really getting your value proposition and defining what your purpose is of the business as well, because yeah. this is a time where you've got to, you've got to be different and, and, and you've got to communicate with clarity because you haven't got that, that, that 
that forum to sit there and explain about everything that you do. It needs to get there quickly and, 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 and almost drive an emotional response as well. Um, I mean, that seems yeah, so sort of really important, Rob, you know, like where digital isn't just a channel, is it? it it's got yeah. to be, it, it's now, it, it's, it's fully integrated. It's one and the same. It's just a, an extension of what you do, you know, be it your, your physical office and your, you know, or your, your digital assets. It feels like they, they have to sort of um, all be linked in. But you're right, if you don't get the, if you don't approach it in the right way and have that mindset, then you're probably never going to, harness the full potential are you so it's interesting right. the way you say it's about their value proposition first yes. yeah absolutely and you've got to digital is a tool you're absolutely right um all the fundamentals of marketing still are, you know are very um important even you know understanding each each persona of your customer as well because the way that you approach one uh, one of your audience personas might be slightly different to another one and it's really understanding what motivates them and what's going to make them listen up and, and be, be inspired by what you're saying. It's not going to be a blanket effect, which I think that's where sometimes um, in the B2B landscape, um, businesses have kind of, they've tried digital and it hasn't quite, well, you know, that didn't work. Well, it's because you didn't do it properly. You, you know, yeah, like, so you've spent the money, but you haven't had the return you expected. But look yeah. at why that is. And you've just got a like blanket approach with very generic messaging or something yeah. like that. Uh, whereas if you really think about it and map it out, and 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 you know what as well, like with um, the, the 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 capabilities of integration these days, you can really kind of utilize different tools and systems together to deliver a seamless experience for for a customer. So I think, um, I think that's another key part of what this has driven as well, is businesses looking at the systems and the way that they operate from a process point of view. Yeah. And really trying to see what's out there and how they can link everything together to streamline things and make it easier to manage. Yeah. I mean, one of your, your strap lines is you know, make, um, making digital human, isn't it? And, and sort of, I guess, bringing that, 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 that personality um, to it as well and, and thinking of it not just as something which needs to be done, but how is it right in the core of your your business? I mean, what, what's the sort of what what are the sort of steps that you'd take a client through or prospective client? So they come to you and, and look, you know, you're these you no know, digital gurus. Help me, you know. Um, what do you need to know? Where where do you start? Where do you and the team start then? Yeah, it's always about them. So um, whereas. You know, we're having a very kind of open talk about how we've been doing and how digital is helping the world at the moment. But I think um, when, whenever we work with the clients, um, and we've been doing this either in person, if they're comfortable, you know, we've got the space to do that. Yeah. Uh, or, or digitally, you know, that we've been doing Zoom workshops and things like that, just so that we can, you know, it cuts cuts out the amount of time people have got to commit to coming to a workshop mm. or... Um, but also, you know, there's still a lot of apprehension around that out there in the market as well. Um, but it's been really successful because we always start with, um, you know, what's their, what's their current challenges? I think when we all started 2020 in January, we've got a whole different set of challenges potentially. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's where we always start. Then we talk about how their, their objectives may, have, may need to be realigned to overcome those challenges. Then we talk about how digital can help. And then it comes back to that customer persona stuff. So right. we'll go through um, a few of their, their personas, really understand what each one values, what motivates them, um, and also the pains. What are they struggling with as well? How can we you know, position this business that, as a helper and a guide to, yeah. to, to that story? Um, and then we talk about, we really talk about then ideas, and it's a very ideas-led um, part of the session where we will we'll start that kind of mapping of a customer journey and how we can come up with different ideas that, that almost uh, not, not just engage, but inspire those customers as well. Yeah. Um, but then it, all, it always comes back to those personas. You know, if, you're, if we're suggesting that we do this, well, how does it, how does it either solve one of their pains or um, satisfy one of their motivations? So it's very much, those workshops are very much about the people that we're talking to, not necessarily us talking about what we can do for them. And, and I know this is going to 
it's one of those questions where the answer is obviously going to vary. But what sort of time frames do you operate on? If I'm a you know a, a, a prospective client and I'm you know like we're in the middle of a pandemic, yeah. I've had an epiphany. Um, right, I'm gonna. Who are you gonna call? It's not Ghostbusters. It's, it's Lightbox, you know, and 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 help. And I can come in tomorrow and and do that session. I mean, how how long is it to sort of really dig in deep and start to set up the you know, I guess the digital assets as well as the the mentality to start to make a change for a business? Well, it's got to be as quickly as possible at the moment. Yeah. And so so a lot gets kind of um, solved in those sessions. So you're talking about kind of two hour, really a two hour period of time that we'll do that. Um, but then after that, it's right, well, what can we get going as quickly as possible? And what does, what needs to, so let's say if it was um, a particular campaign across a social um, yeah. channel, uh, what, what needs to be created? Where are we sending them from that campaign? And does it exist at the moment or does something need to be reshaped or tailored? Um, but we'll try and kind of utilize things that are already exist as much as possible just to cut that, you know, cut down that time the to speed. Launch. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's like, cause at the end of the day, you know, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that yes, websites need to look good, but actually people buy the narrative, you know, they buy into what you're, how you speak to them. Um, so if there's a website there, can we just tweak the copy and, and make it a bit more um, aligned to what, what the, uh, the business's purpose is. So, so you can sort of design the plan. And again, as you say, it's looking for the, yeah. what are the, the quicker wins, which is yeah, exactly yeah. super important right now, but then yeah. there might be a longer piece of the work. And I suppose that's where you, I'm sure, you know, you work with clients, don't you over, you know, on sort of retained basis and it's a constant evolution as well for some. Yeah. It's a partnership at the end of the day. You know, if, if we can get something up and running within a matter of weeks, um, they can then start seeing the, the benefits of it uh, as quickly as possible and, and, and start seeing that return and, and, and the impact that can have, you know, because we have, we've, we've, uh, when you take a hospitality client that we work with, um, you know, you'd think, oh God, hospitality, it's, it's you know, it's, it's on its yeah. backside, of, of, you know, and still struggling. But actually what they've been able to do is launch a staycation product and honestly, the, tra the traction and traffic from their, their paid social campaigns has been unreal. Like, I, I, you know, I've never known anything like it. And it's not, it's not a low cost product that they're, they're taking to market either. It's, you know, it's, it's re reasonably premium. So, you know, there is, there is lots of appetite out there still, um, whether, whether it's B2C or B2B. It's just been, it's making that impact as quickly as possible. There's that massive pent up demand, isn't there? And that, that, I suppose is also representative of the fact that that this situation is so different to a, a normal economic crisis or downturn you know where that is just caused by you know the, the the virus and all the restrictions are coming but there's a lot of demand there but you've got to, as you say i guess better cut through and get the narrative right if you're a business i mean what, what other sort of key success stories have you seen then then during this period are there sort of particular businesses where you thought Either you've been involved with yourself or others you've just sort of seen where you've gone, that's genius. I love what they've done there as a way of, um, of illustrating. Across, across the board, what's really impressed me is the, um, the amount of businesses that have taken the initiative. And when it all, when it all went off in, you know, in March and, and, and it felt like the world was coming to, you know, collapsing. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it was really impressive to see how creative business, businesses were being. And it, it made our job almost a lot easier in a sense because it, it's you you weren't trying to kind of convince somebody that this was a good idea. They were they were at, they were having to react quickly um, and almost take action first, think after right. kind of thing, which yeah. is actually a really kind of it's almost like a startup mindset, which yeah. is brilliant, you know. And and, and and often that generates the most creative um, outcomes. And yeah. So I think. Where businesses have done that, and and that that that's across B two B and B two C, and how they can they can shift into a, a different dynamic of how they operate has been has been brilliant. And uh, I think people are seeing the value of digital more so as well, because yeah. you know we all experience it in our personal lives all the time, um, you know, with social media and stuff like that. And it it can get almost disregarded in some cases and some sectors as 
well, you know, it's it's just for people that want to mess about on 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 Facebook or whatever it is. But but actually, you know, the the evidence. I mean, even from a, a professional services point of view, we've been working with a client that's generated a significant amount of leads through through Facebook as a channel. Which you you know, professional services like you you, you would think that well, well LinkedIn is the obvious channel, but but actually, you know, it's it's abs we're absolutely cleaning up. I love that, that it's that mindset, isn't it? And I suppose the nature of, of the past six months, everyone's had to go digital. You've all had to, you know, be able to get on Zoom or Teams or, or whatever platform you want. And and you know, in businesses, if there are people who maybe took a alternative view, or as you said, digital's just for people messing around over there, it won't apply to us. You know, they've been forced to uh, adopt. Uh, and adapt um, them, themselves. And I suppose it becomes easier then to go, right, well, let's have a look at our own organization. And um, and, and I suppose it's, it's, it's fascinating what you said there, because you work cross sector, don't you, at Lightbox? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we, yeah, we work with all sorts of businesses, we, but it's great because it gives us an insight into, um, you know, all sorts of different ways of doing things and how people do that. It it's, um, keeps, it, keeps it interesting as well. Yeah, and I suppose it allows you then to, you can test and can trial and, and see what works, even what doesn't work. And you know, in, yeah. in this environment, you're going to fail, fail fast, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And I think the beauty of digital is it allows you to do that. You, you get all the data back. Everything is trackable at every single touch point. And like you said, you can you can fail fast. You can get something going. Think think about it after. You know, almost catch up to the idea and um, and and test it constantly to see if it's working. Um, and, and obviously change it if it isn't quite working. So, Rob, just to sort of wrap up then, I mean, any any absolute killer tips that you'd have for people who are watching and, and thinking about their own business and, you know, they're either what they're doing in the digital space at the moment or they might be thinking we need to do do more. What, what would be the, the one or two things that you'd say just uh, when you're thinking about your digital uh, yeah. approach? I'd say um, take a step back. And, and, and just even if it's just an hour or two and really think about your customer journey because uh, it's not just about you know, launching a load of Facebook ads or Instagram ads or even LinkedIn ads um, you've got to if it was that easy everybody would do it right it's, yeah. how, it's, it's how about it's how you, that, you, you gain that interest and that visibility but then it's how you nurture them as well so I definitely just take a step back draw it out sketch it out as to what you want your customer to go through so that would be tip number one. But uh, I suppose that something that predis um, precedes that is um, know your customer. Really think about what they, why they use you, what motivates them, and what 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 pain you're uh, you you sol you're solving for them, um, and tell the story along your kind of customer journey that 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 warms them to what you how you can help them, um, and be clear be clear in your, your communication. So you know. We haven't, we haven't got to tell them everything. You yeah. just want to focus on your core strengths, your, your, your value proposition, um, and what you stand for. So, and yeah, in and amongst these crazy times, it's finding the discipline to to uh, to step out, step yeah, back, give yourself the headspace. And I'm sure you know anyone wants any help doing that, then no, like, that's what, what Lightbox do, isn't it? And then sort of to to sort of almost you know encourage that conversation and dialogue. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think one of the best, the, the most valuable things that people get from, you know, the, our workshops is that, you know, I wouldn't have done this. I wouldn't have had this conversation if I, if, yeah. if I hadn't have come. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a free two hours of, you know, spending time with people who know what they're doing. So, yeah, you know. Well, what we'll, we'll do, we'll make sure I mean, you're easy to, to, to reach anyway. But, you know, anyone watching, they want to reach uh, Rob and the, the team at Lightbox and there'll be all the links. Um, around the video and, and just to say Rob, I mean you talked about that entrepreneurial spirit and the the positivity and um, you know from from my point of view in the chambers it's great to see uh, you know, Lightbox flourishing because you really embody that uh, and sort of seen the journey of the, the the business over the the sort of recent years I mean we're incredibly proud to have you as patrons here uh, yeah. at the chamber and um, it's great to see you today you know in the office as I was joking beforehand, wasn't I? It looks like uh, sort of picture perfect. It's like one of those still images, but no, <laughs> you are really there and uh, and cracking on. And so, Rob, thanks for joining us, and uh, really, really appreciate that. Yeah, really appreciate the support from you guys as well. And um, you know, it's great to be a patron in the chamber, and um, you know, get to spend time with, with yourself and your team.
brilliant. Really appreciate right. it.